Hello. I would like to invite Wendell Davis uh, to explain uh, VR, web VR and what happens when the web gains uh, permanent access set. Yes. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, so my name is Wendell. Um, I'm the head of product uh, at Visor. We're a company that's making a set of tools for creating VR specifically on the web, which uh, may sound quite interesting because I think VR is a very new and interesting subject, but the implications of what it means for the web haven't really been described that much, and I'd like to go into that a little bit here. So first of all, for anyone that's watching that doesn't really know what it is, what is VR? So really, it's all about immersive multimedia. And the idea is that uh, your senses can be basically supplanted or replicated by uh, you know, some, kind of, some kind of digital input. So that could be smell, it could be taste, uh, it could be vision. Because in fact, that's when we think of VR, if we know a little bit about it, we think that it's mostly this kind of thing, right? It's sitting inside of some huge goggles and you know, looking around and sort of being immersed in a visual world that is not the one necessarily that you just came from. So this is, uh, this is kind of where the products are right now. Like this, this kind of product is uh, imminently hitting the shelves. In fact, uh, Samsung have released a consumer product called the Gear that is uh, pretty much this. And uh, this, is, this one right here is Oculus, and that will be released uh, next year, pretty soon. And of course, controlled by something like this. We're, we're a little bit familiar with these kinds of controls, like something that we use our hand. It's a little bit like a game controller, uh, but you don't have the benefit of being able to see it. So what will this tech be used for? Uh, we know that probably it will be used for games. That's definitely something that people are targeting, where you know, there are a lot of games coming out these days that are talking about VR support or, or have VR support. Um, and that's, uh, that's definitely going to be very interesting to see. But there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, people are talking about things like urban planning. And the reason for that is because the magic of VR really is that you get a sense of depth and space, and uh, you can really see uh, the relative sizes of things and, and you know, the relative distances. It makes it really clear in a way that looking on a so-called monophonic screen, uh, it's generally not, uh, not so easy. And of course, things like pornography actually are, are probably going to be a pretty big deal in this medium. So let's talk a little bit about the headsets that are out right now. Um, you guys have heard about Oculus. I just mentioned them. Uh, Facebook did purchase them last year. That was kind of some pretty big news. And it was, I think, one of the first signs that this was really going to be something uh, substantial. Because of course, you know, virtual reality has kind of happened before, right? It's uh, something that we actually had in the uh, early 90s. People were talking a lot about that. But it didn't quite pop. And I think the reason it didn't quite pop is because the hardware, you know, the ability for the hardware to be there just, uh, just, just wasn't, wasn't the time. But Facebook uh, acquired Oculus for $2 billion, and uh, they seem to be pretty serious about their strategy with regard to that. There's also Google Cardboard. Google Cardboard has sold over 1 million of these devices. And these are, uh, you know, they actually are made of cardboard. And you, you actually put uh, your Samsung phone inside of it, and you get a reasonably good VR experience, really, for what it is. HTC uh, announced that they're going to be making this Vive thing. And I believe uh, the Minefield guys will have one of these on demo if you want to check it out. This is really interesting because uh, HTC gives a lot more freedom of movement with this particular device. By the way, it was designed by Valve, so they're thinking about this again in the context of games. But Sony is also getting in on this game. Project Morpheus is coming. Uh, Totem with their Vrvana. Mind Leap with Mind Maze. OSVR, that's open source VR, has a, has a, has a set. Um, Gear VR, as I mentioned. Carl Zeiss with the VR1. Google Mattel's Viewmaster, which actually replicates the old, uh, I don't know if you guys had that here in Finland, but it was basically this really cool thing where you have a stereo vision on a, a little, almost like a, like a photo record. This is the new version of that. And of course, Moggles, which uh, I don't even know what that is, actually. But, uh, but, they're, but they're putting that out pretty soon. So it's worth considering when you look at these devices, and you may think sort of cynically to yourself, like, oh, well, this is ridiculous, and no one's going to buy these devices, and you know, like, because it's, it's an absurd thing to put on your face. And it is a little bit, but it's worth considering what Brandon says here, because uh, this is really just the first generation of these devices, and they are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and they're going to do more and more. Um, I would argue that uh, you know, if you're interested and in know about augmented reality, which is the idea that you're similarly, like you're looking out, uh, but you can sort of see the real space with virtual aspects overlaid on top of it, probably those devices will come together as one thing. So uh, let's talk a little bit about interfaces. So, Brett Victor had some pretty amusing slides uh, on his website, kind of talking about how 
right now, interfaces use essentially mostly one finger or a few fingers, but you know, in a very particular way. And if you think about it like a touchpad, really, you're just using one finger. But he talked about in the real world, we have all of these different ways of touching things, of interacting with stuff. And I particularly like this quote because it really says it all about kind of like where interface paradigms are at the moment. Uh, but of course, in VR, you have some new options. Uh, there's a company called uh, Leap Motion that actually has a has a headset device. Well, we really, it was originally intended to basically allow you to control your computer in interesting ways, but they realized that it goes very well with VR. And uh, it kind of looks like this inside of it. You get actually some recognition of bones. It's not perfect, but it's definitely going to get a lot better. And you know, eventually, you can kind of imagine that the interfaces would look something like this, or you know, much different, but certainly the similar level of interaction. Uh, there are similar things for smell and touch, and this is a mock-up, but, but you can imagine that, that kind of stuff is definitely coming. Similarly. So content, uh, VR content, like the old way and the way that I think a lot of apps right now are, are being deployed, it's, uh, it's something you've kind of come to experience. It's the old download, run, save kind of, kind of experience. The next one that's coming is, is still kind of old. Like you can actually get some VR apps right now on Steam. Uh, and you can download them this way. But what we particularly at Visor believe is that WebGL and the browser really are the future of all of this. Like this is where like a lot of this uh, content discovery is going to happen. It's where the content uh, uh, that, that I think most people want really is ultimately going to be found here. And I think there's there's telltale signs of that in a lot of the development tools that are out right now. So WebGL, uh, you know, you can summarize it as such. It's uh, basically something that gives you access to your GPU <coughs> inside of your browser. And uh, this is really cool because you can basically do you know, pretty much anything that you would normally be able to do uh, in, in a native application. It's not as fast, and you don't have all the same features, but it's, it's quite good for what it is. And you know, we, we've, we've had, minus the GPU acceleration, we've had something like this before, right? We've had VRML. But again, I think this is one of those examples where you had something that was a little bit too ahead of its time. It didn't really kind of fit with the paradigm. And the nice thing is that uh, there literally are billions of WebGL compatible devices out there right now. So you almost certainly have one in your pocket at the moment. And this is a really big deal. I mean, this is, this is basically a, uh, a platform that's far more substantial than something like you know, Adobe Flash ever was, for example. And indeed, it's, it's billions and billions and billions and billions. So some of the development tools uh, include something like 3JS. And 3JS uh, was created by Mr. Doob. Some of you uh, developers out there may know him. And this is a, it's a really popular library for quickly banging out uh, really nice WebGL apps. And uh, I really recommend you check it out if you, if you have a chance. Uh, they have a, a nice scene editor as well. And you know, this is all very early stuff, but it you know, really shows how far browser tech has come. Uh, we have our own app, uh, which is uh, Visor, of course. And this is a, this is a visual programming system. Uh, lets you basically create everything sort of in the browser and deploy it right there. Uh, you don't need to set up any special servers or anything like that. And uh, the telltale sign that I mentioned earlier is the fact that Unity and Unreal are now enabling you to export what you're doing to WebGL, which is really cool because you know, this, is, this is, again, something that like, I think people couldn't really have dreamt of a few years ago, but it now is possible to do this. And uh, mostly through this, this kind of magic, uh, if you know a little bit about like MScript and uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much where it happens. So actually, uh, I'm about to show a video. So let me show you guys kind of like what is possible with it now. So this is something that uh, is actually even a few years old at this point. Uh, this is Epic Citadel demo. And this is just running in bog standard Firefox. Uh, and you know, as you can see, the performance is pretty decent. And it allows a pretty decent level of detail. But you know, this is, again, this is a, a Unreal Engine, MScripten. And uh, you know, the reason I'm showing this thing that's a few years old is because I, I actually, a lot of people haven't come to the realization that this is actually happening. They don't realize that this is possible. So, so that's a thing. So there is a new API. Uh, and I should say new. It's about a year old. I mean, we're, I think, a month shy of, of its one year anniversary, uh, WebVR. And, uh, it's going to really lead to some very interesting things. So uh, you know, what we're really talking about here is a kind of a new way to experience internet content. And I, I, don't, I don't necessarily mean that in a, you know, like a, a Silicon Valley sales pitch kind of way. I mean, like, it's literally going to be like a different way of experiencing the internet altogether. 
And it's mostly by these guys. Uh, Vlad is from the Firefox team, and uh, Brandon is from the, from the Chrome team. And these guys have basically put together this API and uh, you know, released the experimental builds of these browsers that let you do all this cool stuff. I'll actually show a demo right now of a... Uh, All right. Second. We want to try and explore what uh, VR browsing might actually be like. So what we have here on this site is if you have a VR version of Firefox, which you can get from This is uh, the VR version of Firefox he's about to demonstrate and kind of some of the work they're doing at Mozilla. This is uh, Josh Carpenter. Deep Motion, uh, Tony's team, uh, pretty amazing documentarians, the LVR team who are phenomenal. You guys hear that? Goes well. We made a bunch of individual demos, and then MozVR allows you to actually browse through them. Um, I don't have the camera hooked up here, but uh, essentially this is kind of like web design as architecture or space planning. Um, as a designer, this was a pretty phenomenally, mind-blowingly fun process, trying to figure out, uh, yeah, how do I fill this space? And what does a link look like? How do I interact with things in a 3D volume? Um, for example, I don't, again, I don't have the camera, but that text is pretty hard to read in a DK2 level instruction panel, but the wonderful thing about virtual reality is you can actually lean in and read it perfectly. So the implications for interaction design are just mind-blowing, to have someone able to walk around your it space is, and just be lean in and read text and things like that. Interaction model is really basic. Uh, we look at things and we click on them. We're working on a more elaborate cursor, but for V1, you know, MVP, this was the way to go. So if, for example, I want to maybe play this documentary, I look at it, and with my gamepad or with my mouse, I can just click on it. We play a transition. We say a little bit about the incoming site. So if you guys can hear what he's saying. Um, uh, everything you're seeing are being pulled off of GitHub servers, except the actual master itself, which right. is a local host. But this is all running at mozvr.com. Uh, you're essentially seeing, for the technical in the audience, you're seeing two iframes stacked on top of one another. The top iframe presents the, the HUD, the UI, which I'll show you in a second. And the back iframe shows you what you're seeing right now, which is the content. And by stacking these two iframes and kind of covering up the back with the front, we can uh, approximate the look of actually browsing from site to site to site seamlessly. Uh, so that transition you saw, that kind of black-white with that white grid, that's kind of a site transition we're playing with. Um, so this is a documentary being made right now. This is the LVR WebGL video player. Uh, this is just an MP4 echo rectangular mapped onto a sphere. Really straightforward. Uh, this documentarian team uh, contacted me out of the blue uh, and said, we've got this amazing documentary. We'd love to give you the trailer for this. So this is being shot in the Arctic right now, and it kind of shows the educational potential of virtual reality because this you know, can transport a student into a place in the world they would never normally go. You know, one of my... The things I love about VR, its potential is, is a tool for empathy. Like nothing else that could make us feel like we are in these places. We're actually you know, in a place like uh, uh, West Africa in an Ebola crisis or, or in the north and actually witnessing a change in the Arctic happening right now. So the, kind of the part we're really proud of with Moz VR is now if I want to change sites, I don't have to exit VR. I don't have to type in anything into the URL bar. I can just hit space bar. And we've got this heads up display. And essentially, the heads up display just lets us look at these links and click on them. So, for example, I want to go to Seashelf here. Click on it. Again, we have a site transition, and we just go from one scene to the next. Totally seamlessly, again, no need to take off our headsets. Um, virtual reality from day one is going to be mobile. Um, Oculus has said they'll have desktop uh, capability, but also I think the default will be mobile, which is to say all in one, which is to say you never want to have to take off your headset to do anything. So we'll All right, so I'll leave it there. So I think that's extremely interesting because what he's basically showing is you know, a demo of like how VR could look as the web. And they're actively working on this. Actually, they have a, quite, a, quite a big team that they're now working with to, to make this happen. And uh, you notice a couple of things that were really interesting, like the site transitions, like going from one site to another. And why, why did he do this transition? The reason is, of course, because if you have those goggles on, the, the transition effect can be extremely jaunty. It just really can, like, you know, it can be uh, quite disturbing to, to rapidly switch from one thing to another. So it's the kind of stuff they've had to think about. And as he said, you want people to not have to take this off to switch the, to the other content. So they're thinking about this kind of stuff. And they're thinking about this in the context of the web browser. Like, how does the web browser display this information? So what this really means is we're, we're not talking about Second Life or something like this when we talk about you know, uh, the VR web or when we talk about, uh, you know, to use the old word, cyberspace or something like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about something like responsive design, but it's, but it's really more than that because it changes the content possibilities entirely. So 
We think WebV WebVR is really good for some things, uh, you know, and maybe maybe less for others. But we definitely think that it's really good for things like you know ad campaigns, like presenting information in a really interesting and compelling way, uh, making that a very artistic presentation. Uh, shopping definitely is a really big deal because you know again it's about the sense. You can see that you can see the depth, you can see the the scale, you can see all this really in a way that you couldn't see it in, in mono space. Uh, yeah, architecture and interior design exactly the same reasons. Virtual tours, going places that you maybe can't go physically or that you would like to see. Again, giving that sense of complete immersion in the new environment. Journalism, for the same reason, uh, you know, really lets you sort of be inside of a story and experience a story uh, in a way that was never possible before. Uh, photos and video, you know, like experiencing something that uh, has been recorded, but being able to really like look around and experience what it, what's going on inside there. This is this is the kind of stuff that the web, uh, I think, in VR space can be really good for. And of course, memes. And uh, it's an interesting one to throw up there. But you know, when we think of memes, usually you know maybe it's a it's an animated GIF or it's something like this that's just really funny. It makes you laugh. But it, it but the new possibilities with memes, interestingly enough, would be that you know the the meme could have some kind of life to it. It could be something small, quickly thrown together, but just as compelling, or if not more compelling, than, than some of the memes existing are. So I just wanted to give you guys this, uh, this quick tour of like, some of the things that are going on right now uh, in the web VR space. I think it's extremely exciting, and it seems to be something that not a lot of people know about and are thinking about. But this is definitely coming, and I think this is going to be not only the primary way that, that VR is consumed, but I think it's also going to be one of the primary ways that generally like, new media is being conveyed uh, in more depth. So, so thanks very much. I appreciate that. Any questions? Hello. So uh, my name is Yusuke. I work as a service design lead, and uh, the uh, applications you just uh, uh, promoted are uh, similar that I could imagine companies like Razorfish or LGA doing. What do you think uh, are the applications from the uh, providing services? I mean, maybe leveraging this technology with uh, Internet of Things. How do you? How does the thing go with uh, uh, sensors? Because you said that. Uh, a virtual reality will be uh, mobile from day one. Right. Um, well, I don't. I don't know. I mean, like, uh, I guess you could think of something. Like, when you say sensors, you're talking about, like, for example, walking into a store and you know being aware that uh, that certain items are in the space, or like at home. Uh, like, give me some example of what you mean by by sensors and IoT stuff. So, like, what are you thinking about it? Am I kidding? Yes. So, uh, uh, if virtual reality is mobile, right. Uh, then it, of course, offers you the uh, possibility to, to have something that is contextual. So could the environment where you are uh, moving with virtual reality actually uh, affect on the contents that are being produced uh, through that medium? Yeah, certainly. Uh, absolutely could. I mean, and in fact, you wouldn't really even need to do sensors. I mean, you could, you, well, you could do something with GPS. Uh, you could do something with, like, you know, Wi-Fi trilateration. You could, uh, you could certainly have sensors and things like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That would be really interesting as well. I, I think that that probably has more of an application with the augmented reality side of things than it does with the VR side of things, just because, of course, naturally, you're probably not uh, you know, moving into a space in VR physically. Uh, but, but yeah, absolutely. I could see that happening. And I know for sure that there are quite a lot of projects, you know, like you, you mentioned Razorfish, among probably other, many other agencies. Uh, the agencies are all over VR right now, for sure. So there's a lot. If you have some ideas, Definitely approach them about that. They're very open to it. Anybody else? <laughs> there's, one, there's one back there. So um, all this talk about virtual reality and 3D glasses and stuff, we've basically seen this before, as you know. And these technologies are going to look bulky and old-fashioned in yep. a short time. Just, you know, 20 years ago, that was the case with Sega and whatnot. Even Nintendo tried something. What do you think? Is this going to be the time when the technology is far ahead enough not to make it, you know, so that, okay, this is just a fad, it's going to go away, and we forget about it till the next 20 years? 
Yeah, I, I actually believe it really is here to stay this time. Now, that's, uh, you know, it really depends on the kind of things that people end up making with it, of course. You know, I, I don't know what VR's killer app actually is yet. I mean, maybe it was porn, as, as described. I mean, I can definitely see that. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that was the case. Uh, but the hardware is so, I mean, it, it really is legitimately good, I would say, at this point. Like, you know, you really do feel a sense of immersion, whereas the hardware 20 years ago, I mean, I remember, I remember using something in the mall in like 1992 that, you know, it was like a, it was a, it was a glider simulator that I sat in and it was something like, you know, five to seven frames per second and it made me sick to my stomach. Okay, it's, it's not perfect what we have now, but I think that, you know, it's cheap enough, it's good enough that it does provide a really exciting and immersive experience. Um, some players of the game Elite Dangerous, I know, for example, like totally swear by this. So I, it's just really going to be all about the applications. If we do find these applications that, uh, you know, where it provides an experience that you can't have any other way, then I think it will be successful this time. And I think people are working on that. I think and it's, it's, it's being very seriously pursued. So my opinion is yes. Can't prove it, but I do believe so. Anybody else? Uh, hello, my name is Sakari. Uh, I'm more interested in this tool you're developing. Mm -hmm. So, with this Visor IO, can you develop like 3D websites or? Yeah, in fact, you can. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that's actually the idea. And if you want to see a demo, like uh, our CEO Antti made his own like homepage in VR. If you want to see a demo of that, come over by where the Minefield game guys are, and uh, we can we can show it to you. We have a we have a setup for it. But but yeah, that's kind of the idea, right? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Anybody else? Hi. 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 Uh, my name is Johan, I'm a web developer, oh. and I have kind of technical question. Try to answer it. Back in the days when we were building first mobile sites, we made them separately like M dot something. So will this be more like VR dot something? Because there's this question of backwards compatibility and progressive enhancement, which I kind of see a big leap in here. Like how do you make this virtual 3D thing to back, fall back into 2D and right. regular old browsers. Right. Yeah. So, so you're kind of you're talking a little bit about like this responsive design comment that I made, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it's actually been like you know let's say standards haven't really been worked out yet. So if you have some strong opinions about that, I would definitely like join, for example, the the web VR forums and express that because that's probably something that needs to be discussed. But as far as I know, that's not been settled by any means. So it's still kind of. I'm sorry. It's still kind of unsorted on how these two worlds will be connected at some point. Well, I mean, that's, that's sort of what Josh and his team are trying to work out, right? And I, I don't know if they're working out those kind of details, but I imagine they probably are. Uh, but yeah, it's, as far as I know, that's, that's not been sorted yet. But, but again, uh, you should, if you're interested and you know, passionate about it, by all means, join the, join the forums and try to influence that. Sorry, I can't hear you. Just curious if the world will be split into two, this virtual world and the regular old thing. But yeah, it's, it's it's a good question because I think they're so radically different that uh, you know that, that it's very possible. But on the other hand, I mean, one of the things I didn't show that Josh was demoing was actually seeing 2D content in the VR space and like how that might be dealt with. So I guess he's probably imagining a world in which you know these things live side by side. Uh, I'm not sure, you know. I, I, you know, honestly, for me, like imagining the current generation of hardware, it's difficult for me to imagine staying inside of that space for very long. But I know that it will improve by leaps and bounds, and it's entirely possible that I would spend hours and hours and hours looking at 2D sites, looking at 3D sites, things like that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. To the mic, thank you. Uh, thank you <laughs> also for your great presentation. And we will have a next presentation at, uh, starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, Richard Hardy from AMD is going to uh, share his uh, uh, thoughts about innovation in uh, 2015 impacting the future of gaming, virtual reality, and, and the ship design into the uh, 2016 and beyond. Thank you.